we've learned a lot about January 6th. We've studied it and reported on here on the show. And all of the information that we have seen day by day by day, new information being revealed, is that it is exactly, exactly what it looked like. An organized attempt to overturn a democratic election through the force of the mob. People who were inside the Capitol that day and saw what happened are very clear about that. Listen now, Congressman Ruben Gallego of Arizona described what he experienced that day in the new HBO documentary, Four Hours at the Capitol. I was an infantryman in the United States Marine Corps. I had to deal with some very aggressive crowds when I was in Iraq. Individuals themselves aren't usually a problem. But when they get collectively together and they create a mob, the mob is the weapon. I was ready to fight. I saw a lot of shit back in my day, but I was not going to die on the floor of the House of Representatives. Like, I was not going to get taken out by some insurrectionist bastard. I, my plan was to stab somebody in the eye and in the throat and take away their weapon and fight to survive. I saw a bunch of buses pull up, and there were buses to evacuate us. And let me tell you, in coups, when you leave the Capitol, you've lost. And so... I, I started texting every member I could in all of our text chains, I'm like, do not leave. Like, if they tell you to leave, like, do not leave. Like, you're safe for staying here. Like, we get on those buses. There's no guarantee we're ever coming back. This was the most serious attempt on American democracy since the Civil War. All you have to do is watch the footage or listen to the first town accounts of what happened that day. It is chilling. But Donald Trump and Rupert Murdoch together as a pair, partners in a way, have in tandem created a world in which defending, excusing, or lying about January 6th is the litmus test for being a conservative. Today, we learned that one of the few Republicans who has refused to go along with that, Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois, is not running for re-election. To be clear, Adam Kinzinger is a real Republican, like has very right-wing conservative views. I don't like his politics at all, I'll just tell you. He voted with Donald Trump's position 90% of the time. I think there's basically nothing redeeming about the substantive commitments he has for how the country should be governed, except for the fact that he is anti-coup. He is pro-democracy. But that is now the defining issue for the conservative coalition. Congressman Ruben Gallego is a Democrat from Arizona. You just heard him speak about his harrowing experience on January 6th in that clip from the new HBO documentary, Four Hours of the Capitol, and he joins me now. What does it mean, Congressman, to have lies about that event following the big lie about the election be used as the dividing line, the litmus test for what essentially participation and entrance into the modern day Republican Party is? Well, it means that the coup is ongoing. Uh, it means that the coup has moved from, um, you know, the rabble rousers, those losers, those wannabe terrorists that showed up on January 6th to, into the political realm, which actually does happen a lot if you follow terrorism, they sometimes find themselves into politics. And that there's going to be another attempt at this at some point. Uh, and either it will be in the courtrooms, it will be in the boardrooms, that's what you're seeing with Fox News, or it will be uh, in the uh, voting booths where they're making it more difficult for people to vote, or they're just going to cancel altogether uh, the results of election. So uh, it's a scary situation for this country. Uh, the insurgency has moved on from a bunch of people wearing camel pants to a bunch of men and women uh, wearing Brooks Brothers. Uh, and it is probably more dangerous uh, than what I saw on January 6th. In terms of what you did see, I, I was so struck by what you said to uh, in that documentary. I just wanted to sort of ask a follow-up. I mean, this idea that the bus is coming to evacuate you, that there was something in the moment, a sense that you had deeply. And I think there's some reporting that indicated Mike, Mike Pence had this sense too, I think in a slightly different way, that the stakes of staying or going were higher than just the personal safety or the optics. That, 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 that staying in the Capitol or leaving the Capitol meant something about the actual transition of power in the U.S. as a properly constituted democracy. Look, it, it, it wasn't symbolic for me. And what happened is the only reason I actually had view of the, the buses is because I left the secure room uh, to shelter some um, press that weren't allowed in the secured room. And as I was staring out my window, trying to assess what was happening, I saw about, I, the thing was like six to eight buses, and I realized what was about to happen. But everything I've seen in the past, uh, everything I've studied in the past, wh whenever the, uh, you know, the, the duly elected, 
you know, the duly elected uh, representatives leave the Capitol, they they lose. Um, if you look down to uh, Pinochet when he took over in Chile, uh, you could see it other attempts uh, across the country. And it also added up to a lot of other things. The amount of rhetoric that I was hearing uh, reminded me of uh, the lead up to the Rwanda uh, genocide. Uh, that was exactly the kind of what messaging you're hearing right now, by the way. Uh, there is just a lot of things that were adding up to me to the point where I knew that this was more serious than just a bunch of, you know, drunk wannabe militia members that were storming the Capitol. I mean, what you're, those comparisons are, are, are intense and heady ones. And what I'm hearing from you is that you, you feel quite clear that there is essentially a fundamentally illiberal authoritarian faction that's formed that has con gained control of the Republican Party that is, is not c commensurable with liberal democracy in the way that we've understand it, that, it, that its aims, whatever methods it will seek to achieve them, are fundamentally in tension with self-governments and democratic control. Correct. But this has been going on for a while, Chris. I think now we're just, you know, a lot of people are trying to see it. But let's, let's begin. Um, you know, this goes all the way back even prior to this election. You know, when you saw the Tea Party movement and you were at the protests of the Tea Party protests, and I actually was at the first one observing them, what you saw were people trying to overthrow, uh, start the advocacy of overthrowing the government because they didn't like the fact that there was a black president. If you saw the rhetoric they were using, if you saw the legislation they were putting in, for example, when I was in the State House, they were putting legislation to overturn the right of uh, citizens to vote for the U.S. Senate. They wanted to have the state legislators do that from now on. So this has been mm -hmm. an existing part of the Republican Party. The problem is the Republican Party and the corporate overlords have always thought they could contain it, but now it has actually taken over. Now Trumpism is in charge of that. And the corporate overlords, they, the corporations, the businesses, they're basically giving in. They don't care as long as they get their tax cuts. They don't care as long as they keep their, getting their deregulation. They will destroy democracy in the process as long as they keep on, uh, you know, keeping, uh, are able to keep fattening uh, their profit margins. And so the only real way to defend ourselves right now is for us to have a very vigorous uh, democracy where we get out the vote and we stop all attempts for them to actually disenfranchise us. Because again, the coup is ongoing. It's not armed, but it, now it's armed with actual legal briefs. It's going to be armed with different ballot initiatives to diminish people's vote rights to votes. It's going to be through other legal means that unfortunately couldn't have very bad results, more so than what we saw on January 6th. Well, you've got a very high stakes election in your state for secretary of state where there's a candidate who's been endorsed by Trump. And, and, and you know, the understanding, whether implicit or sometimes explicit, it, de it depends on the day from a, a Trump backed secretary of state candidate is I am backing them because I have full faith that they will do what Brad Raffensperger would not in Georgia, which is that I am, I am backing them with the understanding. Right. That, that but when the time comes, they will do what I want them to do. Right. They will. And, and, and like, I have no doubt that Mark Fincham, who's uh, a recent uh, transplant from Michigan, we call him a fake cowboy. Uh, you know, he walks around <laughs> a cowboy suit as if, you know, all Arizonans do that. We don't actually do that, FYI. Uh, but he will actually, if, if elected, he will corrupt our process. He will close down polls. He'll do everything illegal he can to make sure that Donald Trump wins. Uh, and there are many people like that all over the world. So that's why I'm telling you, the insurgency, the coup, it's moved beyond the streets. Now it's moving into trying to get some of these men and women elected into Secretary of State's office, kind of recorder's office, everything they can, basically, because they know that they can't win anymore on merits. They can't even win on their ideas because they have none. All they have is like real hate and angst. And even then, they know they can't win. So all they can do really is corrupt the ballot and try to impose their, their idea of, of uh, who should win uh, against us, against us as in those people that believe in democracy. And this should cut across all politics at this point. 